Tell me everything I need to know about family sharing. Hello and welcome to iPhone Black and White, video series dedicated to help anybody become an iPhone expert, even you. Okay, in this video we are going to be discussing family sharing, whether this is a good idea, a bad idea, if it's something you should or shouldn't be doing, and just kind of everything in between. And there is a lot of information to kind of unpack here, so I'm going to go over as much as I can, as quickly as I can. So with that being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so first question is, what is it? And guys, this if there's one thing that I hope you've taken away from some of the other videos I've put up here, it's to tell you that using the same Apple ID for multiple people is one of the worst possible decisions that you could ever make in regards to your phone. The most common time that you'll see this is going to be like with parents who don't want to take the time to make their kid an Apple ID so they're like oh, I'll just let you use mine and no terrible terrible decision and it turns out that by doing family sharing this is actually a way for you to get kind of the exact same results from what it is that you're trying to do because what family sharing is gonna allow you to do is to create a family unit and then allow multiple people it's up to six people within a family group to be able to share purchases, you know, Apple Music, subscriptions, iCloud storage. I mean, pretty much everything that you want to be able to share, you can share within the family with and everyone is still going to be able to use their own Apple IDs. That's the idea behind it. And it's incredibly easy to set up and I'm going to show you how to do all this. So first we are going to look at some articles from Apple um, to get a better understanding of everything that you're going to be able to do. Okay, so I've got five articles pulled up here. The first two are pretty much the exact same thing, so we're going to get through this pretty quick. But it just kind of gives you an overview here. Family sharing lets you and up to five other family members share access to amazing Apple services, Apple Music, Apple TV, Apple Fit, blah, 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 blah. Basically everything that is Apple, all of that there, I'll let you kind of read through that. Again, I will link all of these articles down below. So this is a better understanding. So share purchases, subscriptions, iCloud storage, and more. So this is sharing purchases from the App Store, sharing Apple subscriptions, um, and everyone's personal files and preferences stay private and this is kind of the key thing is remember something setting up family sharing in no way shape or form gives other family members access to your Apple ID or to your private information it does not allow for that all you're doing is kind of sharing some of the services that you would be using your subscriptions iCloud storage etc etc I'm going to go down here just a little bit more uh, if your family includes children and this is kind of the big thing so if you've got kids who are you know under 18 but definitely under the age of like 13 you want to make sure that you're setting up the family sharing because it's going to allow you to create a, a child's ID it's going to allow you to be able to use screen time which we're going to talk more about later um, approve what kids buy or download I mean this is a great way for you to be able as a parent to keep track of everything that your kids are doing on the phone and by everything I don't mean absolutely everything there's still some privacy but as far as downloading apps etc etc those are the kind of things that you're going to be able to do as well as like sharing your location services again something we'll cover in a little bit um, and some of this information is just talking about screen time and sharing locations. So that is the first article. We're going to jump into the second one here. So family sharing, share your favorite things with your favorite people, blah, blah, blah. It kind of gives an overview again. And But this is talking about setting it up. So here is our family, so to speak. And... I'm going to show you on the phone here in a minute how to get to the screen that you're going to see here. But this will be, if you've never done it, it'll start here with Get Started 
on your phone. And then once you've got it set up, then it would basically look like it would over on this screen where once, and I'll show you how to get to this screen, but once you're in here, it will then very easily allow you to turn all of these features on. Purchase sharing, iCloud storage, all these things here. So this article is just kind of, again, it's just an overview. So let's go ahead and take a look to see exactly where it is that we're going on the phone. Okay, so once again, we're just gonna grab our test phone here and we are gonna go into our settings. And I can't remember what speed I put on this, but anyway, all right, so you're gonna click on your name right up there at the top. And then right there, you see at the bottom, family sharing. So we went to settings, click on your name, family sharing. And I went ahead and set up a fake family for myself and then I removed the other people. So you've got your, you will see all of your names up here at the top. And then you'll see like the get started Apple subscription. So if you're subscribed to anything, you can click on that link and then it will allow you to share some of your subscriptions. So I'm going ahead and I'm clicking on some of these other things that you would be able to do. So like purchase sharing, you click on that and then hit continue and it will give you the option to turn on purchase sharing, location uh, services. Um, this would allow, this is a great way for parents to be able to kind of see where their kids are. If you're wondering, are they home from school or are they out putting graffiti on the walls? Whatever your kids are up to. Um, yeah, I already did purchase sharing. I don't know why I clicked on it twice. Uh, but the big one is going to be the iCloud storage and we're going to discuss that more in a little bit and show you more specifics and how to get that turned on but there's a couple things to kind of keep in mind there but before we get to it um, we're going to click on our name and once you click on the name I am the organizer of this little fake family now the organizer is the person in charge and it is going to allow you to set up different roles so the role of an organizer is they're the ones who are sort of the head of the family. They have to be the ones that turn on purchase sharing and all of that. Um, as the family organizer, you manage family settings, invite new family members, and create and manage child accounts. So, and that's the thing to remember. If you're trying to make a child's account, you've got to turn on family sharing in order to do so. And... I would strongly encourage people out there, if you have kids and they are not using a child's account, it's a good idea to go ahead and make sure that you do that. But that is, again, that's going to be up to you. It's your decision. Apple's not going to force you to do it. It's just a really good idea to make sure that you do that because it gives you more access as a parent to kind of set parameters on their phone. So speaking of that, let's talk about how the different roles that you can have in the family sharing. So the organizer organizer is the head. So the other roles there are also going to be a parent or guardian. That is going to be somebody else who isn't the organizer, but they're still going to have permission to or have authorization to permit or allow kids to be able to buy certain things, to download apps, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then there's going to be another option, another role, and that is just somebody as an adult. And an adult's account has a lot more uh, privacy and restriction. So, you know, whereas the kid's account, it's going to allow the parents to be more active on their phone remotely from another phone to kind of, you know, keep tabs and, and everything. And we'll discuss that more when we go into screen time, which is actually going to be in the next video. So... Let's go ahead, we're going to take a look back again real quick at some of these other articles and get caught up with them. Alrighty, so the next article here is set up family sharing. Now this is pretty much what I just showed you how to do, but this will give you step-by-step -step instructions. Again, this will be linked down below. So you're just going to kind of follow along here. I'm not going to go too in-depth because it's everything that we kind of looked at, but it's also going to show you how to do it on a Mac computer. Um, I don't believe you can do it on a, unless you've got iCloud for Windows. Um, but regardless, you need to be on, on the iPhone or on an iPad or on the Mac. And yeah, I don't see anything about a PC here. So 
I guess you can't do it on a Windows computer. Um, joining a family group, accept or decline an invitation directly from your device. So if you're inviting somebody to the family, it will basically go out as a, like a text message and it will pop up on their phone or on their iPad. They just hit accept and then boom, they are now a part of the family. It's as simple as that, easy peasy. Um, if you can't accept the invitation, see if somebody else joined a family with your Apple ID or sharing purchase content from your Apple ID. Remember, you can only join one family at a time and you can only switch to a family group once a year. So this is something that's important to remember. You can't just go willy-nilly from family group to family group. So once you're in a family, you need to be in it. If you do leave, you can join another family group, but you can only leave once a year. So keep that in mind, it's super important. Okay, the next thing to look at is family purchases and payments. Learn how shared purchases work with family sharing, what the family organizer is responsible for, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so purchase sharing is a feature that you use after you set up family sharing. So you set up family sharing first and then you turn on purchases. When you turn on purchase sharing, everyone in your family gets access to the apps, music, movies, TV shows, and books that family members buy from Apple. Some items, including most in-app purchases, can't be shared. So it's gonna give you access to the apps and like music or Apple Music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's gonna give you access to that, but what it's not gonna do is necessarily give you um, access to some in-app purchases. I'm not going to go through all the hypotheticals on that, but that's just something you kind of need to keep in mind. Um, but basically for like subscriptions, this would be for somebody who's like, I mean, using any number of different apps, like especially for like Apple Music, that's a big one. Um, so which payment method is charged for family members purchases? Okay, so one adult in the family, the family organizer, pays for most purchases that family members make. But if you're a family member and you have your own Apple ID balance, your purchases bill to your personal app, um, your purchases bill to your personal Apple ID balance. So if you've got a family group and within that family group, some people are have an adult account, the adult account is going to be responsible for their own purchases they're still gonna be able to partake in the purchase sharing of different Apple apps or like Apple Music or something like that the organizer is using. But just because you're doing sharing purchases to somebody else within the family group doesn't mean that they purchase something and it's gonna be billed to the organizer. That's not the way it works. So if you're the family organizer and you don't recognize a charge, blah, 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 search your email for receipts, probably your kids buying something on, um, well, I would say Fortnite, but they aren't on there anymore. All right, so pretty much, that's pretty much it as far as going over the details here. This is a pretty straightforward um, um, article here, but again, I'll link it below. But then here's the big one, share an iCloud storage plan with your family. So with family sharing, you can share a single iCloud storage plan with up to five other family members. And I'm gonna show you how to do this here in a second. So share a storage plan with your existing family. If you already use family sharing, you can set up shared storage. And this will give you the instructions on how to do it. There's only five steps on an iPhone. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. Um, bah, 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 not using family sharing yet, no problem. You can choose to share your iCloud storage when you first set up. Now, here's the thing to remember. You do not need to share your family uh, or iCloud storage. Because remember, iCloud storage that can be shared is right here. It's either gonna be 200 gigabytes or two terabytes. You can't share 50 gigabytes and you can't share the five gigabytes that comes with you know your Apple ID. So if you're a parent and you're saying, hey, my kids don't need, you know, iCloud storage, you know, I'm not going to buy the 200 gigabyte plan, which is $2.99 a month. I'm only going to use the 50 gigabyte. 
sure, that's fine. You can still create a family sharing uh, group. You don't have to turn on the iCloud storage. This is just if you want to do this. So keep this in mind. Um, and this is a key thing right here. If you already had an iCloud storage plan, so when you share your iCloud storage, any family members using the five gigabyte plan are added to your family plan automatically. So if you share this, you set this up, you share it with your family and they join and they're, they're on the five gigabyte plan. As long as you've got the 200 gigabyte or the two terabyte plan, then that they're automatically connected to it. But if you've got a family member who's already buying their own like 50 gigabyte plan, or, or higher, then if a family member is already paying for their own iCloud storage plan, they can choose to switch to your plan or keep their own and still remain part of the family. When they switch to the family plan, they get a refund for the remainder of their personal plan. They can't keep their current plan and use the shared family plan at the same time. So basically, if they join the iCloud storage then it's automatically going to kick them off of their own plan and then on to the family sharing. But they actually have to still click on it and choose. So again, it gives the steps here for that scenario. You're gonna to go to your settings, tap on family sharing, then tap iCloud storage, use family store, that's for the organizer. Um, and then we're gonna take a look here. Okay, so we're gonna take a look here and go on our phone and we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna click on our super fake name at the top and we're gonna click on iCloud. So pretend that I'm in a family sharing group and that I want to join the iCloud storage. I'm gonna get to this screen and right at the top click manage storage. Now you're not gonna see it on the screen because I don't have the option, but it's basically telling me you know, I've got the five gigabyte plan, but right above that, right above where it says change storage plan, it would actually say something. I can't remember the exact words, but it's like, you know, you know, use family plan or use family iCloud storage. And that's all you need to do. You just click on that and then boop, it moves you right over. And now you're on the family sharing iCloud storage. So Easy peasy, it's super simple to get that signed up and that's usually the number one thing that people are the most curious about and as far as sharing and setting that up. Okay, so we've got a few more things that I just wanna to try to cover with you and I told you this was a lot of information so let's go ahead, we're gonna look at the last two things and this is how to download purchases that have already been made um, by like the family organizer and then also take a look at Apple One and see if that is something that your family might be interested in. Okay, so we're looking at download family members purchases on the iPhone. It'll be pretty much the exact same steps on the iPad. Uh, in fact, I think it is the exact same. I don't know why they don't put that in there, but anyway. So when you set up family sharing, you can add up blah, 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 five family members, right? We already know that. Uh, do, 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 when your family shares Apple Music, blah, blah, blah. So once once purchased, an item is added to the initiating, initiating a family member's account and eligible purchases are shared with the rest of the family. So, for example, download shared I, uh, iTunes purchases. So all you need to do is go... So little Jimmy can go to the iTunes store, tap more, then tap purchased choose the family member, tap a category, for example, music, tap a purchased item, then tap download. So if you've downloaded the album Warheads on Foreheads, for example, all you need to do to share that with your family is they're gonna go to the iTunes store, then tap the more button, then tap purchased, then they'll choose the family member who purchased it, tap the category, for example, music, tap a purchased item, and then tap the download icon. I know I said that twice, but it's worth covering again. So again, it's sort of the same exact steps for the App Store. Open the App Store, tap the profile picture at the top right, tap purchased, choose the family member, then tap the download icon next to any app that they downloaded. 
Are you seeing a trend onto Apple Books? So obviously I'm not gonna cover it all here, but you can basically see it's super, super simple to do this. It's basically no more than four steps and that's just for Apple Books. So this is how easy it is. So once you set up the family sharing and share your purchases for other family members to go and to find it and to download it, whatever it is. Okay, so the very last thing that we are going to look at here, and I'm going to cover this super briefly, and this is Apple One. So Apple One is the service that they provide that Apple's got for Apple Music, Apple TV, Apple Arcade, iCloud Storage, Apple News, and Apple Fitness. All six of those things are grouped together. And so what the family organizer can do is actually buy this and for as the you'll see how much. So for the family it's $20 a month. So the family organizer could basically be spending $20 a month and then share this with up to five other people. Um, and for the family, it's music, the TV, the arcade, and the iCloud storage. It's not going to be the fitness or the news, but plenty of places to get your news. And as far as fitness goes, you're going to have to have a watch. So that might be something that people aren't necessarily going to want to be sharing anyway. So probably the best thing to do would be the family sharing and you're only going to get these four things, but it's really the only four things that your family's probably going to care too much about to begin with. And it's a really good deal. Um, it really is. Uh, I'm not paid by Apple to say that. I'm just kind of giving you my opinion on it, um, especially for the 200 gigabytes. I mean, you get to share that. So, and it's just kind of everything. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom and just kind of give the description. So it's an all-in-one subscription that bundles up to six. Apple services, the easiest way to get your favorite Apple services at a great price, blah, blah, blah. And can I share with my family? And since that's what this video is all about, if you have Apple One family or, or the premier plan, you can use family sharing to share all included Apple services with up to five other family members and Apple TV and Apple Arcade always include family sharing, even in the Apple One individual plan. So it's kind of a good deal. If you want to do more research again, I will just kind of link it there for you to be able to read later. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know this was a lot of information. I really know like if you got this far, Major kudos to you. I hope that you at least found this beneficial and helpful. And if you did so, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, come back here, learn how to become an iPhone expert. And don't forget, share this video with your friends and family so I can turn them into experts as well so they'll leave you alone. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much. I will catch you guys next time. See ya.